Hey, I'm Scotty, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to loosely sketch this lighthouse in five simple steps. And there's also a really important perspective tip that you really need to know that will improve your sketching. Okay, so step number one is to plan the sketch out. So we'll put a dot here for the top tip of the lighthouse, and then we're going to go down and just put the width so down from there. Imagine that triangle that's on the top. And so we'll put the two dots here, the side. And that these are just general widths, so we can, don't have to follow that exactly. And then we go down, and I'm imagining that top section where the red lighthouse is, the red part of the lighthouse. So that's a, approximately a square. Then that next section, the white section, it's about one and a half of those red sections. So I'll go down one, and then a half. So it's about there. Okay, putting in some dots there. Um, and then probably the bricks is about one of those sections up here. Okay, so we've got a very rough, make sure, if you, if you want to, you could use pencil to do a center line. So if I look at that, that, I have to move that top dot across a little bit, making sure that's in the middle. So I know that this is gonna fit on the page now. So step number two is to do the main shapes. Now, when we do the main shapes, we have to think about perspective. So we'll look at this diagram I've done here. I talked about this in depth for Patreon, but I'll just mention it here that we have a horizon line here, a circle here that's very narrow, and as the circles get higher, they get more and more circular. So keep that in mind as we go through. So what I'm gonna do is draw that ball in the end here, very loosely, hold your pen loosely. I've got it in the middle of, the, my finger's in the middle of the pen, and we go down and creating that circle there, back to the tip of the circle coming down. There we go. And then it's a bit of a curve there, and then we come down to this other dot here and down to the other dot here. Okay, so we've got that. And then let's draw this circle here. So we can see here this, this circle is the most curved circle compared to this one. So keeping that in mind, I might put a dot here just to show where the circle goes. Like that. And okay, then down here, we can look at this circle and from the, between the two dots, we go up a little, just a little bit less than up here and let's draw that circle. So I'm imagining there'll be like an oval that'll go all the way around, but I won't draw this bottom section. So it's a little bit further out than this top line here. And get around. So then we've got our two circles, bring that out a bit there. Okay, now let's go down to the next dot. It can be a little bit of a wobbly line. You can add some character in like that if you like. You can see here, something on the door. We don't have to worry too much about adding in any details yet. Now we go down to this section here, we jump out a bit, and we've got the bricks, which comes down here. Now, I'm gonna leave that side of the wall here um, until I know where those stairs are. Okay, so let's go across here. Now, because it's close to that horizon line, this circle, even though it is a circle from top view, is a very subtle curve. So it's almost straight, just like that. And then we can compare and look at that shape there to make this shape. Something interesting there, add some interesting lines. Uh, let's skip over to this section here, add some very expressive lines there, and also on this side, going down there like that. So that is how we structure the main shapes. So that's how we structure the main shapes, and just remember that perspective of these circles here. Now we're going to make our way from the top to the bottom, doing the details. So behind this tree actually is a pinnacle like this. So I'm going to add that in, and then a circle around here. And this stage, we want the loose line work to come out a bit more. So one way you can do that is just by trying to keep everything in one line. Now we're following that circle, following this curve that we've already done for this top rail, like this. Come back here. See how, instead of going over to this point, I'm using some of these lines to do, continue the one line like that. And then we can go down to this bottom line. This bottom edge here where the platform comes to and I will skip down to this point here so about just lower than halfway we need a curve here that matches this curve or it could be in between but more closer to this one so like that and then we go up from here to do the rail so it's a bit higher than this curve so like this it comes quite low like that hey and then above that curve and then we come to this okay so now I'm doing the details on these rails. So once again, for just for looseness sake, I'm 
keeping them in one line. And this rail, I try not to get it right on the other line. I've got a little bit higher there, and it continues around. So just breaking everything down. And there's also a rail on this side. And then you can go something like this. I'm get those squares there. Now it's starting to look quite complex, but it was easy because I'd already done all the main shapes. Now, a really cool detail in this is these little patches of light here. And it, it makes it look like you're looking through the window, but you can see this back edge of this circle. So what you can do is pretend that this circle, this oval's there, and continue that through. And with the wash later, that'd be a great thing to emphasize. So you can put a bit of sky in there. Then another detail now is this, these lines here like this. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see those as red lines later. Let's make our way down to this white section and following the same curve that we have above it, just like that. Once again, I'm just looking at a detail, drawing it. Where's my next detail? One line to this line here, just right here and on the side here. Okay, now let's divide this section up. So we've got to go from a circular shape to more of a flat shape. So this curve here, well, how about actually we draw the door? That would be easier for us. So if we go between the two points here, that's halfway up a little bit, and that's the door in between those two struts. So and then down, across, and then this, and there's this wheel here, there, and the main feature is this dark shape here, which we can add some nice color there, nice um, value there, sorry. Now, the window up here, because I have the door, I can put it in between those two struts, once again. See, I'm even using one line there, and it just gives all those sketchy lines. Um, it makes it more interesting. Okay, and now let's draw all the, the structure on this as just single lines. I'm not going to try and draw them as have a thickness yet. We could even add a, um, a shadow underneath the line to give it that look. Okay, before I, I'll continue down there because I have to divide them up, let's draw a line here. So that goes around a, lot, a little bit less curved than there. So curved on the side there, but then it's getting quite flat. And this one here will be almost just flat, just drawing it across. Okay, and we can then draw these lines. So that's a little mistake, but I don't think that'll make any difference in the end. Pole here, coming down, whoa, let's see. That wasn't a straight line at all, but now I can just change it like that. I wonder if that's a ladder, what that pole would be for. Can't quite work that out. Okay, I'm le I've left a step to the end. Um, now, how are we going to do that? So once again, when I approach something like this, let's break it down. So it goes up to this point here. And what we do, come up here just below that window, and then we've got to imagine that angle. Or how about I do the, I'll do this strut on this side, this rail on this side, and we can see the angle there. It's about 45 degrees down to about there. Sometimes it's good to do the furthest most, most point to make sure that silhouette is nice rather than coming in here and realizing it comes in too short. Okay, and then come across, how wide would the stair be? Like that. Now we can go up this way, following that line. Like that. Okay, and now making sure that there's enough space for someone to walk. Might be better to start up like this and then up like this, making that line parallel. Okay, and then we'll come out and give it a bit of thickness. Okay, and then a line underneath there, like that. Okay, and then let's do the stairs. Okay, so there'll be a thick section there, and then the stairs will go up like this. And I'm gonna try in one line again, like I've been doing. A little bit tricky here. They're, they're very wobbly and all over the place, but I think that just is nice in a loose sketch. So now we have the structure to do those vertical bars that go across here. The main thing I'm concentrating here is just to make the space roughly the same and it going up and down. And see, I've got my lo wrist locked and I'm moving my elbow. I'm concentrating, have to focus to get that line vertical and not go off too far at an angle. There we go. So that was a lot of fun doing the stairs. 
Um, and now they'll cast a really nice shadow under there, actually, so that's great. Now we can continue some of this. Now this is just to anchor the sketch, having some loose lines like this flicking out to the side can lead the eye back in to those shapes, like that. Alright, now we've got the brickwork, so we'll go across the top here to get that ledge, like that. Now once again, with a detail like this, I'll be using one line again. So I'll do a square, leave a little gap, leave a little gap again, making each square a different size. You'll notice with the bricks that they overlap right in the middle, so I'll come across might draw one there, do this, trying to make them a little bit different. I'm not even looking at the actual blocks on the reference, just trying to make sure that they come in the middle. So these gaps are in the middle of the one above. Okay, so one there, and then one there. And you can look at, I look over every now and again to see if, if I'm going in the right direction. So I've got four layers, they've got five and a half, so that's okay, close enough. Okay, like that. And the actual wall comes down here, so it's behind behind all there, so we won't worry about that. We're going to be leaving the tree because I think that'll distract from the actual line work here. Um, if you'd like to have a go, you could try that, but that's, that's the way I'm going to leave it. So that's all the detail done. Now we're going to move on to a wash. I've got my Pantor water brush pen. And so first we're going to do the sky. And so this beautiful sunset, how do we do that? So I'm going to be using a technique called wet on wet. where So I've got my water brush pen. So you use a bit of water. I've already got water in the brush. And we're just going to add a bit of water and I can try and see where the light is around the page. And I just want to add it around, around the lighthouse like this. So we're just dampening the page. And leave a little bit of a gap between your line work and the horizon there. Now we get, now I'm using Purple Lake. So this is Purple Lake and we're adding and so then this purple lake will come across the top here like this. Go down, not too close. Just down to about that point there. Okay, and now I'm working quickly. Have to get, uh, where is it? So then this color is, so now we're using permanent rose. Just a little bit. Try not to make it too saturated. A little bit there, and then we're coming down a bit more. Right down to there. A little bit of cadmium yellow here, just at the bottom. And a bit of cadmium yellow there, and should mix in. Okay. And then that's created a very nice gradient. Now we'll move on to the red we have here. So I've got a alizarin crimson, and we just want a light wash, just seeing how much I would need, probably about this much. Cover all the surfaces. Now, when I'm doing this bit, it's going to be a light wash. So we start off at the top here and leaving a lit, little bit of white on the side here. That's where the light's coming from a bit more this way. So I'm just going to go over the whole surfaces where they are, but leaving a little bit of white. And then just on those rails, don't have to trace every rail, but just a little bit of red in there. And then here, we're going to do that whole bottom section here, just to the end there bring it down, bring that water down. And I'm actually going to do that bottom lip, even though on the reference it's white, leave that. And then like we did before with the rails, just a little bit here and there, a lot of red in there. Okay, and that's it. It looks very dull, but we'll get back to that later. Uh, we want to add color to the bricks. So we have burnt sienna. These are light as well. So let's add a few bricks here that are with burnt sienna, I'd add a bit more saturation there. And so I'm just trying to space them out evenly. And then we'll add a bit more burnt umber. So it's a darker, darker brown. Okay, maybe need a bit more. Okay, and then we add Payne's Gray. Darker, let's get some really dark colors there, yeah. Still a bit more water, nice wash in there. So we've got a nice patchy looking uh, brickwork there. Next we're going to use Payne's Grey, so I'll put Payne's Grey here. And this is for those dark sections we're going to block out. So we'll leave these areas here with a bit of light, it's in there. And then as I go down, I'm going to grab a bit of Ultramarine. So we've got Payne's Grey with a bit of Ultramarine, and add that in just to give it that interest. 
like that. A bit more saturation to the top there of that Payne's Grey. And then we can use that same colour there and a bit of the ultramarine I'm picking up. Same in here. Those dark windows. Now we're going to move on to shadows. So let's grab some ultramarine. Put there, quite a bit of ultramarine. And then Purple Lake. Just add in a bit. And if I feel like it's too purpley, add a bit more ultramarine back. So it's, I want it to be like an ultramarine with just a hint of violet in it. So the way I'm going to approach this is doing the shadows. Just a little bit of shadows. See, I can test over down there to see how saturated that is. Okay, so we're going to put shadow under here. Under that surface there. Might add a little bit more ultramarine. And then we can just increase that darkness in there. And a little bit on this side. You can see the shadow there. Under there. So it doesn't totally match that it's a sunset and the light's coming from here. But we're just using that artistic license. So go up and do follow the curve back down. So the, the light would be hitting that edge there and going down. Now here on this edge, it's a little bit more subtle, so I'll add a bit more water. So I'm taking taking a bit of out of the paint there and making that a subtle, a bit more subtle there. Okay, now we have the shadows in this area. There's a nice shadow there. I might start adding a bit more ultramarine in this one. And there's this great shadow on the side of the stairs here and a bit in there. So make sure that the stair edges have stay white, but between we can add some shadow in there. And then this staircase shadow. So it's a straight line down like this. And then I will make sure it's got lots of color. And then we're drawing the stairs, painting the stairs like this. So I have little lines there, little bits of the light coming through. Okay, and then they come out like this. So now we can also grab can add a little bit of this Payne's Gray. And I might add a little bit of that. So this is Purple Lake back into that shadow color just to give. So we're doing some of this, these bushes, but they're using purple instead of any, any green. And we can use the tip of your brush and tap, or you could tap it like this. But for a water brush pen, it works a little bit better when you just grab a bit on the tip, make that really nice texture down there. Okay. Now I just think you know, I've got a little bit of spare space here and I'm getting that burnt, this is burnt sienna and take out the color. I'm just going to add a little bit here. I feel like I missed that. Increase there. Now we've got sand. So just to link, to link the sketch into this section here, I'll just put a few marks there. Now also opportunity for splatters and texture, dipping in the end of my brush, tapping it like that. Now, now looking up at this, this here, we need to add some more saturation. So what I'll do is I'll get a lizard and crimson there, and then we'll add in permanent rose. Okay. So it's sort of a mix between the two. And this is where this should pop out a little bit more. So I'll add saturation just in points. See, we've got saturation through here underneath underneath this section here saturation here on this side of the building here bring that down and then underneath and we'll just remind everyone that there's rails by adding in the dots here i'll be able to see this as much but some there too some red on the end of our brush and add a little bit on the surface here to make that also more interesting so by keeping it light when we add saturated areas in shadow it really adds a nice contrast, a tonal contrast there. I'm going to let that dry. That's all the watercolor done. And then we're going to move on to some highlights. Okay, the last step, and one of my favorites is adding highlights. So I have my Uniball Signo pen here, and I'm not going to be doing too many long lines here. It's more just little highlights on edges, edges around to sort of separate. So the watercolor goes across here, but there's an edge there. So that's the sort of line I want to add some highlights to. So, and same with up here. Struts here poking out, there was, there was quite a big highlight there. And on the edges of these, these supporting struts going across. Okay, and there's some highlights across here. And on these bricks, you 
can see there's a little bit of light catching the edge there. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, but if you really want to improve your sketching, I recommend joining my Patreon, because you can sketch along with me with the full version of this tutorial, and with all the reference and the templates that I have, I go into more depth with my explanations, and we also, uh, each week, talk about the reference. I put a few down, and people vote for the, which one they like, and give me some suggestions or areas of focus that they would like to hear about. But otherwise, I've got lots more tutorials here on YouTube, you can check out right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.